My name is Matthew Borchers. Uh, I'm a graduate student at the University of Kentucky. I'm a master's student. And today I will be speaking about chocolate milk in the school lunch program. And I want to preface this talk with first saying I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a food scientist. I'm an animal scientist. Uh, but I think that's OK, because I, I believe this to be more of a social issue than a scientific issue. And I guess that's what we'll be discussing today. So. I'll start with a little bit of history of milk in schools. And I guess it was first introduced through the National School Lunch Act. And this was signed into law by President Harry Truman in 1946. So this has been around for a while. Uh, this would be the same president who decided to drop the atomic bomb. So a little bit different focus with this. Uh, but the purpose was to provide school children with high quality nutrition at a low cost. And with this, schools would provide a meal for a child, and then if they met certain requirements met or established by the federal government, they would be reimbursed a certain amount of that. And milk meets one of these requirements. So in hand in hand with that, low-fat chocolate milk also meets these same federal requirements. And currently, around 70% of the milk available in schools is flavored, with chocolate being the most popular of that at 62%. So we'll move into the chocolate milk controversy. Uh, not everybody is, maybe is aware that there even is a controversy. But uh, around 20, 2011, uh, there was a British chef, chef named Jamie Oliver. And Jamie Oliver has his own TV show. And basically, he has launched a crusade against processed foods. And he started this in LA. And he mostly targeted, or one of the targets, I guess, for his campaign was chocolate milk. And he claimed that chocolate milk had as much sugar added to it as a candy bar. And to illustrate this, he filled a school bus full of sand to represent the amount of sugar that is consumed by LA school children in a week. And I think this is one of the first times that this achieved national spotlight. And even just a simple Google search of the topic yields some pretty strong feelings on both sides of the issue. And there even is uh, talk of political pushes uh, to have legislation to ban chocolate milk in schools. So what's the big deal? Chocolate milk is high in sugar, fat, and calories. That's a fact. Uh, but proponents blame milk for US childhood obesity. And children, they claim that children become conditioned to sugar. And it may actually be more that it is a low quality Low quality food and poor choices that are likely to blame, not specifically chocolate milk. This is the wrong presentation. <laughs> but, I don't know. We had two presentations loaded on here. Oh, All right, that's better. So, OK, we'll start with this. So obstacles. The dairy industry is referred to as big business in most of this. Uh, any assistance from the National Dairy Checkoff is, so this would be funds from dairy producers for milk promotion, uh, have been viewed as interference by big business. And American schools uh, serve around 403 million gallons of milk per year. This is worth about $1.35 billion. So this does represent a pretty significant chunk of milk sales in the United States. So this brings us to what, what is the big deal with this? So proponents do blame that uh, milk for US childhood obesity. And they claim that children become conditioned to sugar. And they like that sugar. And they continue to make choices for sweet things as they age. But it's probably more likely that low quality food or poor, cho poor choices are more likely to blame. So total carbohydrate content is also targeted in chocolate milk. And they target added sweeteners and fructose and sucrose, and specifically high fructose corn syrup. But in these calculations, they also forget that uh, lactose makes up a portion of the total carbohydrate content in milk. And lactose is just naturally occurring milk sugar. It's produced by the cow. It's in white milk. So milk ha chocolate milk has a higher sodium content as well. And the American Heart Association attributes high sodium intake to hypertension, stroke, heart failure, osteoporosis, stomach cancer, and kidney disease. 
And a side-by-side -side comparison with some of the choices that school children would have, we see low-fat milk, low-fat chocolate milk, low-fat white milk, orange juice, Gatorade, and Coca-Cola. And we see that in calories, total fat, cholesterol, sodium, and total carbohydrates, uh, low-fat chocolate milk is higher in all of these categories. However, when compared in protein, vitamin A, vitamin D, calcium, and iron, it is significantly higher than most of these, except for potentially low-fat white milk. So low-fat chocolate milk, all in all, provides protein, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, riboflavin, niacin, vitamins A, B12, and D. So there's a lot of nutritional benefit to drinking chocolate milk. It contains a lot of essential nutrients. And this is especially important, as uh, Rob just talked about, uh, many, many children in, or many people in the United States don't receive adequate nutrition, whether this be because of a lack of proximity to or ha access to quality nutrition or just making poor choices. Uh, but school lunches may represent one of the only meals where adequate nutrition is provided to children in a day. And taking away one of the primary sources of these essential nutrients could be extremely detrimental to the health of children as they age. And even the American Heart Association says, yes, the sodium content is higher, but the nutritional value of milk, even flavored milk, outweighs concerns about the amount of sodium. So even the association that claimed that so increased sodium intake uh, causes that whole laundry list of problems say chocolate milk is a way, the way to go. So I think all in all, I think there's a bit of a trade-off. So the positives outweigh the negatives in this case. And taking uh, milk out of the school lunch could essentially remove a lot of the, nu the nutri nutrients that a child would need. And I think also it helps to build rapport with milk and the public. And it also establishes good eating habits that can last a lifetime. And the, ch the choice to include dairy in your diet is started at a young age. So I think it is, a it is really important that we have our school children drinking milk. Now I wanted to take a bit of an audience poll. So as I said, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near a, uh, a expert in this subject, but I drink a lot of milk. So I like to think that entitles me to try to claim that. Um, but growing up, I, I w went through a public school system. I drank out of cardboard cartons. And I was curious, how many people in the audience remember drinking out of cardboard cartons in, in school? All right. Would, how many people would uh, agree that, I guess, the milk had kind of an off taste to it? Cardboard taste. I would definitely say yes. And I think that we're doing ourselves a disservice in the dairy industry by, we talked about conditioning children for sugar. We are incorporating, or getting children to associate milk with a cardboard taste. And this is just simply because of, it's a cheap packaging. And we're in doing that, we are conditioning them to shy away from milk later on in life. And maybe the, the switch towards more of a plastic or a glass or something recyclable uh, would be good in not only getting children to drink more milk in school, but also over their lifetime drinking more milk. And as we've seen, in 1975 to 2012, we've seen a decrease uh, from 260 pounds per capita of US milk cream, milk and cream uh, consumption to under 200 pounds per capita. So since 1975, we've seen this huge drop in milk consumption. And I'm not claiming that cardboard cartons are the cause of that, but I do think that we need to be conscious of this and we need to change some of our strategies and how we're uh, marketing milk to not only our children, but our adults as well. So moving forward, I really think we need to continue to advocate the benefits of chocolate milk. Yes, it has high sugar, it has high fats, it has high calories, but in taking it out of a school child or out of school children's lunch, uh, we could be doing our or losing all of the benefits that it could provide. But I do think we need to look to decrease the total fat and sugar added to chocolate milk. So this is going to be a bit of a balance. So fat and sugar are flavor. And we need to have children that like to drink our product, but we also want to, them to be healthy. So we need to find the right balance in that. 
Also, in general, I think we just need to make milk more appealing to children. And if whether that's by changing the uh, container or the, how our marketing strategies, how it looks, uh, I think we really need to be looking at that. So moving forward, I think we should be looking into these things. So with that, I'll wrap it up.